psychoanalysis for me is about. And I, I must apologize because I'm going to say things which I've said for the last 20 years, which to some of you may seem obvious, so simple, that maybe it's not worth discussing it. But maybe the point will be of repeating all this, of giving a summary of what I, my, opinion, my view of psychoanalysis is, I will help you have a synthetic view of the whole structure, what, the, what it means in terms of structure, what it means in terms of changing our way of thinking. In fact, and then I shall start, the theme of my presentation, a rough presentation, is that, although this is not yet recognized, with the arrival of Lacan, a true follower of Freud, as I will try to show briefly, philosophy, the philosophy of our 21st century has become psychoanalysis. I take psychoanalysis, not Lacanian, because Freud was very prudent. He never wanted to mix with philosophy. He didn't want to have any bother with But Lacan also. But when you get to the bottom of it, it's the philosophy of our time. And even though Lacan started from Hegel, he dropped Hegel after a while. The other comes from Hegel, of course, as you know. And then he developed his own thing, which to me is the ultimate philosophy for the 21st century. Now, we start with representation. It all begins with a loss 
a huge loss, a loss that you cannot re you can, about something that you cannot never recover. You are born. <laughs> you are subject. You are incomplete. Why? Because you lose the body of the mother. Now Lacan doesn't agree with this. He has some very good paragraphs about what birth is and about what is this jump into emptiness is. But he does he does he does it because he's clever. But he doesn't develop this. This is not his thing. He prefers to speak of something else, which is the fact that we exchange objects with the other, mm -hmm. such as excrements or such as uh, food and so on and so on. But we won't go into that. So Lacan, is, this is not true Lacan. This is beyond Lacan. If you will forgive me for being so preposterous. Uh, so we lose what we lose. I don't know what we lose, but this is a structure. A structure where we are a subject and then nothing. This is the unconscious. This is Lacan's real. What is the real? The real is this. This is me. Or you. <laughs> you see? But what happens when I get born? I am in the world. But I am in the world, but not I am not the I am not the world. I am in the world. And I perceive the world, but I perceive it through my senses. And you remember, of course, Freud's little box, where we start with perception, ends up with consciousness. I perceive the world, but I don't perceive it as it is, and as I am. Because in that box we have filters, which are signs of our history. The way we've been built, this is already the other, by the way. So it's in Lacan, but even Freud, you can see how like fragile it is. In that little box between perception and consciousness, we are filters. Filters are my history. The way what happened to me, I may not have been told that, but the way that what happened to me was how to do with the extra, with the world. So you see here we have a structure which is one and two, which you can have here one and two. This is unconscious. The unconscious, this is the conscious, but it's also the real. Because the real, and we're coming to Lacan here, the, the real is something that you are part of, but you are not in. You are separated from the real. You always, what, what, what do you do with the real? You interpret it. Perception, consciousness. You give your own version of the real. And that is because of your history. So there we are, here we have a structure in two parts, conscious and unconscious. And this is of course the Kenyan, and it's very fraudulent also. So you see, because what we have lost, and why do I say we have lost something? How do I know? Well, I know that we have lost something because I desire. And if you desire, because you don't have. If you had, you wouldn't desire. So you see, luck, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting luck, because it's not luck, it's lack. <laughs> uh, because, so that you desire what you are lacking. And so this is a big Lacanian word of le manque. We are acted upon by le manque, by what we lack. We don't know what we lack. And we are trying to replace what we lack by something that we don't know of, because you will see that the other here has some influence into telling us what to look for, which may not be, we may, may not be all we right, but this is what we are told to do. So here we have a structure with uh, conscious and conscious, and the lack. And the lack is, of course, what, what gives desire its meaning. We are incomplete because we have lost our mother, we've got the one, we've lost something anyway. We desire. So we get to uh, language then, which has nothing to do with psychoanalysis. So sure, Jacobson, nothing to do with psychoanalysis. The two men, Freud and, <coughs> and, and, and Saussure, never met, never knew each other. They were working at the same time, 1905, more or less. Right? You know, so what do, what do we learn about language? And this is Lacan precisely, a reading of Lacan, of, of Saussure's linguistics, elementary linguistics, I agree with you, but still linguistics, and applying it to Freud. 
what do we do when we, I, my, title, my subtitle was Psychoanalysis and Language. This is foremost in Freud, in, in Lacan. What do we do when we speak? We produce representation of the world. It is not the world. I mean, words are not the thing. I mean, the thing is dead. The thing is always escapes us. So we replace it with word. You see? And so it's not, nothing to do with thing, signifying and signifier. It's just a, a psychoanalytic structure. The structure of lack and the structure of replacement. And so this is a structure which parole, emptiness of the unconscious. This is a structure of the dream. This is a structure of uh, uh, conscious unconscious. I speak to replace. I say because I desire. I, I, I re yes, I represent. Representation does apply to the dream and does apply to language. It's one and the same structure. It's not the same thing, but the same structure. This is what Lacan read into Freud, and it is very Freudian. So it is not his interpretation of Freud. It's not a, a, a sort of betrayal of Freud. It's just that he said, oh, obviously, the, the structure of the dream that we had in. Can you see this? Because if you don't, I won't bother. Uh, so you see, what's the what's what's dream? The dream is what is latent and what is manifest. This we remember more or less. This we take pleasure while we sleep and we don't know what it is. We only have memories of it. Again, the same structure. It's the structure of language and the structure of the dream because they are one and, uh, one and the same thing that justifies Lacan going into language and defending language as foremost, that is to say, la parole. What I say is what I imagine, and so on and so on. Okay, so we're still, still talking about, we're still talking about representation. You see, representation is a fundamental concept of linguistics and of psychoanalysis. What could I say anymore? Okay, so, what, what does representation consist in? Uh oh. We started with the bar, the big bar, the big wall between subject and an object, unreachable object, unreachable. So the same structure, but I write it like this because it's easier. I am inhabited by great tree. I don't know why, and maybe one day one will be clear, but I, I, have, I, have, I have libido. I want to go forward, I want to grab things. I want to replace what I have lost. And so, boom, but I encounter the world, the wall. I encounter la bar. What the hell, then I, I, I do <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? But you see, la bar, which is what <coughs> separates the unconscious from the conscious, the real from reality, which is not the same thing. Uh, the bar is, and this is, one of the words that I'm proud of, because I think I'm the only one who has said it, the bar is porous. There is a bar. You don't go on the other side. But in a way, you do. I say in a way. In a way. So the bar is porous. I can go here to signify my desire. But then from here to there, with a certain distance, a certain, how do, so we have A and B. So what do I do? I find a signifier. I find a symbol. I find something that will carry my desire. You see, so that desire, so my, my, so my speech, my words, at the same time, carry and hide my desire. Because this, of course, here, you cannot recognize my desire. If you want to recognize it, you have to go to analysis and go back this way. And it may take a long time. So you see, uh, I want my mother back. I choose a woman who remember to, to simplify. I choose a woman who is more more like my my mother than others. So that this is the parole representation of desire, but a veiled representation. 
It's, it's a very, that's why we don't understand. That's why we have an ally. That's what we have to find out. What happened in the transformation of dream into desire? Uh, I think I have, I have to go quickly, so I won't develop this. So this is what, I hope this, this structure is clear, but I redo it, because that to me it's fundamental. So we have the wall, we have the, 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 the opening, and we have this, right. So this is not desire, this is free. And I make it, I make, and this is something that I do, I make it carefully, I'm careful to distinguish drive from desire. Drive is just rough. I mean, the animal, the libido, but there's no object yet. Then you find an object to your drive, but not that first stage is drive. I want it. I want to eat, I want to love, I want to be too aggressive, whatever. I, I just, but it's not desire. I mean, it is desire, roughly, but it's, it's part of desire. It's the first chapter of desire, it's dream, drive. Then this drive finds an object, and this object is represents what I desire. Freud, again, Lacan and Freud. Lacan invented a few things, but not that, because Freud said, Desire finds a substitute to illustrate itself, you see, to find some identity. He uses the word, uh, um, never mind, it's a German word. Again, it's just, I know the word very well, but a substitute. The substitute is what? The substitute is le symbole. Symbolization is the substitute. What you, what you have found here, is something that carries your desire, mm -hmm. but hides it. Yes. This is why it makes it so difficult. Yeah, now, that's the end of my first part about uh, the uh, encounter, about uh, reproduction. You can see that because when you think in terms of reproduction, uh, dream, the unconscious, and language are one and the same structure, which justifies what Lacan does in a very fraudulent way. Second chapter, the other. The question is, but what happened? What happened in this place here? Now, thanks to the second topology, which I discard, but anyway, it does exist. <laughs> thanks to the second topology, we have e e e ego, and somewhere there, superego. It's very difficult to articulate the first topology to the second topology, but never mind. We'll do that later on when we have coffee. <laughs> but here, so, the, so you see, the space of transformation, the space where it takes place, where I go from desiring such a woman instead of my mother, or desiring such man, or, or fighting such man instead of my father, it's the same thing. Uh, takes place in that space, what I call le trajet la trajectoire. The A, A, B, the trajectory from A to B in the act of signification. Mm -hmm. So the question is, okay, so, so the, second, the second topology, I hope I'm clear, is in the second topology, Freud said, well, it's in the ego. In the ego, this is where it starts. The ego takes the desire and makes it into something that you could signify. Except that, if you read Freud carefully, as I hope I have, word by word, word after word, in, in all, all the passages where he speaks of the ego, he doesn't think much of the ego. I think he speaks of the ego in spite of himself. He says, ah, the ego is incompetent. The ego always fails. I can give you the proper references if you like. So many passages in, in, uh, in, in Freud where he discard, I mean, he, he used it as a structure. He, he needs it to, for his demonstration. But in fact, he despises the ego. You know, I, I'm sure you know that. You know what he said when he ended uh, talking about the ego. He said, well, we must accept that the ego is only a constitutional monarch. That is to say nothing. That is to say a, a guy without any power. I mean, you know, nothing. And to me, it's much simpler to say 
this fast year, which is devoted to the ego, this is more, this is a bit, further, I hope, a step further than Lacan, because Lacan uses the ego, and he uses the second topology a bit, not much. To me, this is empty. This, the ego is an empty space. An empty space where transformations take place. So, what's going to happen? Well, we have to resort to a third factor which fills that space. And to me, this is the other. Now, if you read Freud, you find a structure. He doesn't speak of the other. He speaks of the superego. But of course, he doesn't give it the importance that Lacan does, even though in anxiety, <coughs> superego and the other are, are the other. So, here we are, Freud says superego, Lacan says, because he's not thinking in terms of guilt and in terms of uh, 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 punishment, but in terms of signification, he said, well, the other, he doesn't say it like that, by the way, which is a big mistake. The other is the, what filled the empty space. That is to say, <coughs> what tells you to do what you do? That is to say, mommy, daddy, sisters, brothers, grandmothers. Nancy was giving me a beautiful example, which I am going to stop when you want, but I have lots to say again. <laughs> now, our president, the French, I don't know whether we should be proud of. He's good looking, I know, but should we be good? I mean, should we be proud of such a president? I don't know. But he was brought up by his grandmother. He married a woman who not, could not be his grandmother, but his, his mother, certainly. Hey, great love. Look, well, there you are. You have a chosen object as a reproduction of what the other was. You see? So the object that you have lost, you try to recuperate. He did. Successfully. <coughs> good. Good for him. Okay. So, so I understand this. This is, this is empty. This is empty until the other comes into action and says, thou shalt desire thus. And here, we, if we had time, we would have a chapter on identification uh, at the object. Because the, the other, what does the other do? The other points out your object, tells you what the object of your desire is going to be. You see, and this is what you have to analyze. Why do I love that kind of woman always? Why do I love that kind of man always? Why do I fail in my enterprises? Or why do I succeed in my enterprises? What happens? Why am I always pleased to stay in the second seat and not in the first, in the front seat? And so on. you can, I mean, you ask yourself, what the hell? Why do I do this what I do? And then if you look into, after six or seven years of analysis, no more, I hey, think, no more. Then you decide that, well, I know. Well, that's pretty bad. And some people have lasted for 50 years. I've been doing, in, I mean, you know, on my own, but I've been in analysis for 50 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I mean, why do I do what I do? What am I guilty? Why am I so when, what am I, am I guilty when I succeed too quickly or too much? And so on and so on. I'm going to publish a book, perhaps. Perhaps. If a publisher is good enough to me. And my best pe people around said to me, Ha, ah, be careful, you don't have an accident. <laughs> okay, so. Too good to be true. So, you see, the other, the other is. What fills, the, let me see if I don't forget anything that's <laughs> fundamental. Oh, I forgot something. Uh, let me come back a couple seconds about signification. As you know, the structure of the dream, period, this one, is the structure of the metaphor and of metonymy. Oh, this has been said many times. This is what the point of uh, using sign linguistics in a Lacanian way condensation and displacement have the same structure as uh, met um, metaphor and metonymy. Same structure. Forget that. So we are here. The other tells me what to do. And the other, of course, is what? And this is the big weakness in Lacan. But it's not such a weakness because this was 60 or 70 years ago. In his discourse de Rome and all, he's dead now. Now we can continue. His mistake is that he doesn't want to step further than having said the other. 
the capital A. It doesn't want any further. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, it's for us to look, to say, what's my other? Or what's my others? Mm -hmm. Because the others are my, the, 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 the total number of elements in my determinations. The other is my determination. What determines me unconsciously, not because well, I was told to do this or that, mm -hmm. but what, so that's why you, you have to go back into our past for a while to decide the, what happened, how was I, how was I formed? Uh, what sort, and this is the question that I hope every analyst in the world is asking without saying the words. The patients, what kind of an object were you for your pros, for your parents and for your pros environment? What kind of an object? What did they want, not knowing them? Because it, I'm not condemning my parents. They didn't know. And they had this out of their own. And Lacan, I think, is afraid of condemning the parents. So he, he said, others, and then he stops. And then my job, I think, is to stall out what's in the other and uh, how does it work, because there's only one, there's not only one other, there are others, sisters, brothers, grandmothers, mother and father, and so on and so on. So <coughs> this is what I have, this is the chapter of other, which is finished. You see? And I can stop in a minute, if you think it's <laughs> worth it. How many minutes do I have? <laughs> okay, now we come to the ego now. I hope I've said enough. If I haven't, we will, we'll, we'll discuss it afterwards. <coughs> yes, my other is, my other is the, the, the totality of the influences, unconscious influences, that design, 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 that formed me. Because, and this is what I insist upon, the child, is an object for his parents. Unconscious, the parents are not bad or good, they just they are, they are what they are. But the child is an object. I mean I mean when they when you know you have to have two persons to make a child. Whatever the leg legislation, whatever the number of people going about, you have you have to you cannot make a child without two persons, a man and a woman. Whatever it comes from. I mean the sperm comes from. You have two. And these two are your elementary determinations. And for them, you must have been an object because they did it. And consciously they didn't say, we're going to have a child and so on and so on, we'll be emperor of China. No, no, they said, well, they didn't say anything. But in their mind, as an object of this, because they are desiring, because they are desiring persons, obviously, you are the product of desire, and conscious desire. And this is what you have to find out in your analysis. You see, so, and of course, this object, Father, mother, grandmother, grandparents, sisters, brothers, uncle, and so on. So the other is not sort of, it's not a monolith. It's made of many things. Sometimes you have a good teacher or a good analyst. Is your good other and you're saved. I was saved by, by, by my mother who became a good mother at 16, when I was 16. And I was doing all sorts of bad things. But she stepped out of her way, of, of her timid way, and decided to help me, and that made it. I forgot. I became a good, good, scholar, good student, and then I, and I, I was the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. You see, so I, I have seen other cases where, again, and this is one of my sentences: the big other has probably one or several little others in it. Mm -hmm. You see, and so what the analysis can do is find out how can we help the little other to fight the big other when it is destructive. Because, and I could almost stop here, so you get what the other is, and this is Lacan. The weakness of Lacan is that he speaks of the other all the time, but he doesn't see what it is. And so what we can do, because he, he's done a lot of work, is that a replace other by determinations. Already we have one step further. Now let's find out what determinations are. And about these determinations, I can say this. I concentrate on parents because they are the closest influences, but it didn't be it didn't be father and mother, it can be much more than that. But if you have two good others you find, you'll be president of the Republic. You succeed. <laughs> if you have one destructive one destructive parent and one constructive parent. It all depends on the balance between them. Who is going to win? The father of the aggressive father for the Oedipus child, 
uh, all the nice mother, protective mother, and so on. And so you can have this also. Because this is mother, this is mother, and so on. So if you have two destructive parents, poor guy, do you have them? You've had it. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 pity, I pity the guy or the woman. I mean, that's, I hope that doesn't happen too often, but it does. So you see, this is what this is what we have. This is the other. Boom. I think I should stop in two minutes, three minutes, and say just a word, just a word about the ego, which you saw in my in my my painting. Uh, because I want to I want to say things. So you see how Lacanian thinking derives from Freud. I mean, it's a direct consequence of what is in Freud. The superego is not far from the other, and so on and so on. So the idea, the ersatz, the substitute, is not far from the, the signifier or the symbol. So it's very Freudian. So here again, <coughs> my structure. And here is where it takes place. This is what an analysis is concerned with. It's empty space that is filled. And this is where I come in. After I come, if you will excuse me, by completing this Freudian structure with this, which of course is already in the superego, it's already in the other, but not presented like this. The other, my determinations, are the masters of my destiny. They decide what my objects will be. And if the objects are not, I'm talking about identification, destructive, that's fine. And if they are, they are, not, uh, are not destructive, that's fine. But if they are destructive and make me unhappy, that makes me fail in my life, and this is what I want to keep away from or analyze and not do the same thing. Not to fall in love in the same way as when I was 20, not aggress people, <laughs> not uh, choose the wrong job, and so on and so on, whatever you want. Okay, so that's it. And so the ego, I take, I take away from my system. I replace it with what the other has decided. And this is my destiny. I think I'm almost through. <laughs> I may have forgotten a few things, but... Yes, you see, if you read Freud, you'll find that the notion uh, about the, the, the ego was... Uh, um, Freud? opinion of the ego was that this notion was an important feature. It's an important feature in the second topology. It's important, not capable. He uses it, but I don't see why he uses it. If it's, if it's important, he can reject it. Yes, in several places, Freud speaks of the ego as an agent who has failed in his task. I mean, I'm not inventing anything. In inhibition, symptom, and anxiety. Okay, well, that, I think it's so. <coughs> to conclude, what is the subject? The subject, a complete subject, barré, is the result of all this structure. Uh, drive, which is your nature, whatever you are, your, your aggressivity, your normal animal, uh, you know, like uh, forces, then the others, the determination. And this, of course, is fundamental in psychoanalysis. In the other, you can discuss the couple, you can discuss society, you can discuss anything. I mean, you know, because it started with ego. Ego has another, the little other. But the other was the person in front of me, the slave. Whereas here, the other character is much more on this. So our task is to develop what the other is, what our other is, and to try to keep away from what is destructive thinking. I may have forgotten anything.